in Tuscaloosa. Brown behind the wall of blockers up to the 30. To tell us about the Bulldog offense, here's ABC News personality Deborah Roberts. The offense is led by sophomore quarterback Matt Stafford, who Mark Rick called the best quarterback he's ever coached. Senior Sean Bailey is back from injury to give the receiving core a boost. The line is anchored by Fernando Velasco, who moved to the center position this year for my dogs. Well, we're going to see Georgia taking some shots down the field, and I expect to see more on early downs out of Matthew Stafford. They start from the 30 with Thomas Brown in the backfield. Stafford flushed. Throws on the run and complete to the 47-yard line to Muhammad Massaqua. To tell us about that Crimson Tide defense, here's defensive end Wallace Gilbert. Starting lineup for the Alabama Crimson Tide defense. Up front, we have Prattville's finest, Bobby Greenwood. Behind him, we have freshman sensation, Orlando Boo McClain. Behind him, we have 49 for your mind, Rashad Johnson. Accompanying him, Simeon Castillo, I dare you to throw it. Stafford completes his first throw and gets the first first down of the ball game. Up at the 48 yard line. Another play action fake. Stafford again down the sideline and over through Sean Bailey. Had a step on their best defensive back, Simeon Castile, but the pass was wide. But I like the idea. Right away, Georgia being aggressive. First two plays, let Matthew Stafford throw against that defense. Ultimately, they want balance. They want to run the ball with Thomas Brown and Sean Marino. But he knows that Nick Saban is going to play a lot of man-to-man -man defense. He likes to get up in press coverage, and Mark Rick knows the best way to attack that is to throw the ball down the field. Big difference from Arkansas a week ago, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Quite a bit. To the shotgun. Four-man rush finally gets there, but the pass thrown underneath. And I think they're going to say that Thomas Brown, who caught the ball, had a knee touch the ground around midfield. Mentioned about Matthew Stafford when he has a problem. It's because of his feet and He has a tremendous arm and a lot of times when a guy has a really strong arm He tries to throw off his back foot because he knows he can stick it in there But every quarterback even if you have a strong arm You're much better off settling into your drop setting your feet being on balance and throwing on time Stafford with all of his promise did not put up good numbers a year ago when he got a chance to play but his numbers are better this year. Here's the flanker screen. Bailey with a catch. First down and more. Bailey down to the 30-yard line. Sean Bailey now with 13 catches on the year. He missed last year with a knee injury. They think he is back full speed, and he just got 20. Well, Georgia anticipating some pressure on third down. Throw it quick. Get it out of the quarterback's hands, and then Sean Bailey eludes a couple tacklers. That looked like it was going to be stopped short of the first down, but he just keeps bouncing off a few tackles, gets it upfield like a good receiver should, and Georgia in great field position. His tight end trip Chandler threw him a good block. Brown finally gets a carry and is knocked down at the line of scrimmage, taken down by the linebacker Keith Saunders. You mentioned a big difference from last week for Alabama, and that's the biggest change that they've got to go into this game knowing last week Arkansas was going to run the football on first down. They were going to run it on second, and most times on third down they were going to run the football. This team, much more balanced. They want to have run and pass, and they'll throw on any down. All of a sudden, the wind really whipping around with those thunder clouds overhead. Brown again. Off the left side, not much there to the 27. Let's take a look at tonight's X Factor presented by Dell, Todd. Well, I think for both teams, it, it kind of gets around the quarterback. For Georgia, they've got to avoid third and seven plus with a young offensive line on the road and against a Nick Saban type defense that likes to bring different kinds of pressure stay in manageable third downs and for Alabama patience is a virtue for John Parker Wilson a lot of zone defense take what the defense gives him 
Third and six, four wide receivers for Stafford, who comes up and changes the play. a screen pass but there was nobody there to block they just let everybody through he was the only guy left standing at the well, line of scrimmage i think this was a check at the line of scrimmage marino hits the block and then drifts off into a screen situation it's man-to-man -man coverage on the outside so all those guys running in pass patterns they're drawing their defenders with them down towards the end zone and a lot of open grass for marino to exploit his blockers were 10 yards to his left Stafford sends his fullback back as he's changing the play again. That's Sutherland. Brown. Stopped at the 11-yard line. They need to reach the two for a first down. We talked about Matthew Stafford, how important it is for him to manage the game. And Mark Rick said, really, since the Auburn game last year, he has done a great job of managing the game. And already early, we've seen him check at the line of scrimmage a couple times, communicate even with the crowd noise, make sure everybody's on the same page. The young guy who just gets better. Every time he steps on the field, he gets a little bit better in terms of understanding how to play the quarterback position in the SEC. Two wide receivers, both to the left side. Now they send Sutherland, the fullback, out as a win. And Brown back to the short side where there is nobody to give him a block. He was just eating up Simeon Castile up in a hurry from the corner. Let's go to Holly Rowe. Well, guys, Darren Mustin, the middle linebacker for Alabama, is not playing in this game due to injury. The coaches told us that last week when he went out with an injury in the first half, countless times they were lined up wrong. Keep in mind, a true freshman, Orlando McClain, is making the calls back there, guys. It does not look like they're organized even now. And Holly, they're running around right now. They're trying to redirect traffic. Everybody pointing in different directions. I'm amazed they haven't taken a timeout on a critical down like this. It's another screen. And it's going to go for a touchdown with Brown. Well, you can tell they were confused. Guys were pointing at each other, saying, you go this right. way, no, you go that way. And the middle just opened up. And that was a beautifully designed play. It wasn't so much a screen as it was just the back was going to get the ball automatically. But he showed block. He showed pass protection the same way they did with Marino when they converted the third down. Two times on that drive, very well executed, throwing to the back by design. To two on for the point after. A 70-yard opening drive. Five minutes and 30 seconds off the clock. And the Bulldogs have taken a 7-0 lead at Alabama. Celebrating it on the Georgia sideline, and why not? That drive looked too easy. Well, they definitely had the upper hand. They had the Alabama defense back on their heels. Ten plays, 70 yards. Matthew Stafford, three completions on third down plays. It was five out of six overall for 64 yards. He only missed the one deep throw down the sideline. The two will kick off. Arenas and Lowe are deep. Arenas. Second in the SEC so far, 28 yards of return. Lowe will get a try this time. And Lowe taken down up near the 23 yard line. Go back and take a look at the touchdown. Beautiful execution. Now, this is Thomas Brown right here. He's going to come and show block over here. Watch Trenton Sturdeman. He's going to fake in here and then ultimately come out and block the guy who's responsible in man coverage for Thomas Brown. Show block. Release, get the ball to the back. Sturdivant gets into the defender who's responsible for the back. That's by design, throwing to the back against man coverage. Very well executed. Alabama from the 23. Grant is the tailback. Cuts it back, has a seam. Grant drives his way out to the 44. Nifty move. C.J. Bird had to make the tackle after a gain of 22.
If you are just joining us, you have missed a Georgia touchdown on the opening possession. Alabama has the ball for the first time. They have already ripped off a 22 yard gain. First and 10 to 45. It's number 16 against number 22. It's a screen pass overthrown intended for Grant. Here to tell us about the Alabama offense center, Antoine Caldwell. Starting for Alabama offense. That quarterback, the comeback kid himself, John Parker Wilson. Out wide, all-time leading receiver for Alabama, DJ Big Play Hall. In the backfield, Mississippi's finest, Terry Grant. And we're anchored up front by the bone crusher himself, Andre Smith. John Parker Wilson swings this one out to Grant, up to the 46. For the Georgia defense, here's Deborah Roberts. Our defensive line is pretty young, led by junior Jeff Owens and sophomores Roger Battle and Cade Weston. Danelle Ellaby is doing a great job as linebacker, helping replace three guys who all made the NFL. And on the corner, we have Thomas Flowers and another sophomore, Asher Allen. Go dogs! Deborah, thank you very much. Very talented young lady at ABC News. Good protection for John Parker Wilson. Now it starts to break down. See, that's Georgia. Georgia plays a lot more zone defense than what John Parker Wilson saw last week with Arkansas. They brought a linebacker and dropped a defensive line lineman and played zone defense. They're going to make him read the coverage, stay in the pocket, and find holes in the zone. And that's that's the way Georgia plays defense. He and D.J. Hall had such a tremendous first quarter yeah. against Arkansas. They were just killing the man-to-man. -man. Right. Fitzgerald will punt to Mikey Henderson, averaging 15-3 early in the season. First team all SEC punt returner, according to the coaches. Their preseason choice for this year. And that one will go out of bounds near the 25 yard line. They'll mark it at the 28. 7 0 after a 25 yard punt. Denny Stadium, 92,000 on hand. It's a 7 0 Georgia lead. Bulldogs at the 35 yard line. Stafford to the shotgun on third down. Blitz coming. Stafford throws in the flat. They've got the first down to Brown up to the 49 yard line. Brought down by Rashad Johnson, a gain of 13. They are wearing them out on throwing to the backs on third down. That's now six of eight conversions on third down. You see Matthew Stafford, six of seven, throwing it. When they lost to South Carolina a couple weeks ago, they were three of 18 on third down. So already that part of their game much, much better in their second SEC game here against Alabama. But they have really worn Alabama out with the backs coming out of the backfield and the quick throws from Matthew Stafford. Stafford straight back, good protection, guns it down the middle, complete to the 35-yard line. Chris Duncan with his third catch of the year. When you run the football with effectiveness, your play action's good. Good job by Stafford. You see he get his feet set. He gets his shoulders turned around after the fake. And he hits his big receiver, Chris Durham. Durham is six foot five, the tallest of the Georgia wide receivers, and does a nice job hanging onto the football after he gets popped in the middle of the field. Brown and Marino in there together. That means Stafford will go to the shotgun against. They split the backs. Three wide receivers also in on this formation. Here comes a blitz. Marino trying to get outside. Shaking tacklers and driving for extra yardage. That's a heck of a run by Marino. Here's tonight's AFLAC trivia question. Who is the SEC all-time leader in receiving yards? Think about it. The answer is coming up. Usually it's 
a player from one of these teams. Yeah, usually, you know. But this one is this one. This one's kind of tough. It's a little more of an obscure name. Yeah, I didn't get it. Second and six, the faithful trying to get the Alabama defense to stand here. Brown. Nice hole, power running to the 22-yard line. That's another first down. Chris Davis, the redshirt freshman left guard, pulled and threw him a yep. good block. And Alabama went to a four-man line on that play, and they shifted the line to their right, and the run came uh, to their left. Nice call by Mark Rick, Mike Bobo, the, the offensive coordinator, took over play calling the last two games of last year for Mark Rick. Doing a nice job tonight. Great mixture of run pass and Matthew Stafford very comfortable managing this game right now. Mike Bobo up in the box. Good play fake by Stafford. Down the middle, incomplete. Oh, Nearly team. intercepted. That's a bad decision. <laughs> You know, you talk about managing the game and making good decisions, and a guy with a great arm sometimes thinks he can make any throw. This is a play where he's got to just throw this one away. He lofts it into the middle. Very, very fortunate that didn't get picked off. And, you know, he gets out of the pocket. Alabama had pressure. Throw that one away. And don't take the chance of throwing it softly over the middle. That was Kenneth Harris, who was surrounded by four defenders. Second and ten for Stafford. Had to call timeout. He doesn't have any. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> well, delay a game. Ouch. And see, what, what Mark Rick needs to tell him, too, is that Nick Saban, if he can get this quarterback into this cat and mouse and trying to switch every time the defense shows something, that's what he wants. Because Nick Saban's defense is very multiple. And they will try to change with whatever the offense adjusts to. Get up, line up, and run the play. Second and 15. And now... The big guy, Vince Vance, a sophomore at 320 jumps. All start. They have so many young guys on this offensive line, even the backups. We talked about how young they are, how inexperienced. Their first game on the road, first game dealing with crowd noise. And they got a new line coach this year, Stacy Searle, who came from LSU. It's his first year working at Georgia as well. So now second and 20, and the crowd's back in it. Marino. All right, Reese, third and 15 for Georgia. Stafford changing the play again. And see Nick Saban jumping around the sideline. As soon as Stafford adjusts, the Alabama defense adjusts. Draw play, Marino. Those were the kind of adjustments they were not making early. When Stafford changed the play, he always seemed to change to the right thing. Now they're trying to confuse right. him. Well, now they kind of settled in a little bit more. They're a little bit more comfortable. They understand. Usually after one or two series, you know what an offense is trying to do against you, what they're going to try to run. And right now you're seeing a little bit more multiple defense by Alabama adjusting on the move. Brandon Katu, who is a terrific field goal kicker, will try from 45. And it's good. He's hit six out of seven this year. That was the longest at 45 yards. Ten nothing ball game now. There's Uga six. We want to know how seriously they take football. He's in the record book as the Uga with the most wins all time. <laughs> this is serious stuff. Oh yeah. He's also the biggest Uga. Yeah, 78 victories. Way to go, big boy. Didn't have anything to do with Mark Rick or recruiting or anything like that. It's just which dog is in uh, is in charge. 
Right now, Matthew Stafford is the top dog for yes, he Georgia. Is. Alabama needs to get a sustained drive here. They've run half as many plays as Georgia in this first half, and they've got to rest that Alabama defense. The two, good kick to low at the seven. Across the 20, they've done a good job keeping it away from Arenas. He's up to the 21. Well, we asked you who is the SEC all-time leader in receiving yards, and the duck is going to tell us. It's Terrence Edwards, played at Georgia 99 to 2000, caught nearly 3,100 yards worth of balls. Nobody, uh, well, one guy, the production meeting got it, right? Yeah. He's a Georgia guy. Too. Yeah, well, that's yeah. cheating. It was. Straight up the middle, a power run by Glenn Coffey. Been slowed early in the season by a shoulder injury, but this guy's a load. Yep. And the strength of this Alabama team, they've got de depth at wide receiver, and they've got talent up front. Their center, Antoine Caldwell, an outstanding player, ran right behind him on that particular play. Now they want to go to a hurry-up offense. Coffee again up to the 38-yard line. So they got the quick snap. Danell Ellerby, the junior linebacker who had been starting in the middle, and they moved him to the outside as Marcus Washington has moved into the middle as they want to get both of those guys on the field as much as possible. LRB has been their most consistent defender so far this season. John Parker Wilson with time. Throws intended for Hall. Uncatchable. The crowd wants interference. The, the officials felt that ball was uncatchable. And therefore, let the contact go. Prince Miller had the coverage. Looking for D.J. Hall in the corner route, and this ball well over the head of D.J. Hall, and it was out of bounds anyway. No chance to catch it. I think it's a good no call by the officiating crew. Never liked that rule. You know, if you're interfered with 10 yards short of where the ball is, who says the interference didn't keep you from getting it? Never liked that rule. Right. Okay. <laughs> in that case, he would have needed to be about seven feet tall, though. That's why these guys have 36 inch vertical <laughs> jumps. Okay. They play like they're seven feet Good tall. Good point. Good point. Nonetheless, a stop by Georgia on third down forced John Parker Wilson to throw underneath against his own and make the tackle in space. Georgia's defense, Willie Martinez, third year defensive coordinator. Before that, it was Brian Van Gorder. They have been very consistent. There's Willie. Very consistent defensively. They have seven years in the NCAA. Their total defense, their scoring defense, has been in the top 20 in the country. Consistency is right. Thanks, Reese. Georgia backed up to its own 12-yard line. Stafford on a little half roll throws intended for Massaqua. Good defense. Simeon Castile came over the top of the receiver and may have interfered or may have interfered with him catching the ball, not interference. Let's go to Holly. Well, guys, offensive line coach for Georgia, Stacey Cyril, is doing some serious coaching down here. This is such a young group. During that last timeout, he told them the importance of finding out where that rolling safety is going for Alabama. They went over that for several minutes. The other thing they said, hey, we're trying to sell the run. He wants to be, them to improve in their stances and what they're trying to sell to the defense. Thanks, Holly. Stafford facing a second and ten. Another good run by Brown. I just want to pick up on that point, what Holly's talking about, why selling the run is so important. Georgia is a play-action pass offense, and that's where they get a lot of their big plays. But it's not just the quarterback faking to the back. It's also the offensive lineman showing run on a play-action pass. And if they show run when they run the football, but when it's a play-action pass, they definitely show pass. That doesn't fool the defense. So that's what it means by that showing pass or showing run on those play-action plays. Pretty balanced play calling so far. Almost 50% on 35 offensive plays run. Third and two, Stafford to the shotgun. Been so successful on those little passes. That one is tipped yep. and Brown can't get to it. They had Brown again on a third down pass to the back out of the backfield. But Alabama able to get a hand on the football this time. Ezekiel Knight, number 47. 
He's a great story. Now, this guy came in in the same recruiting class as a wide receiver with D.J. Hall and Keith Brown and Matt Cadell. This is only his eighth game as a defensive player, and he's the second-leading tackler on the team. Very versatile athlete. Arenas is deep for Mims' kick. High snap. Hustled it out of there and boomed one. Arenas cuts it back. Taken down at the 41. Time now for Todd's Taste of the Town. In honor of tailgate week, I decided to move Todd's Taste of the Town outside amongst all the tailgaters. But with so many choices here, impossible for me to pick one on my own. So I had to enlist the help of an expert. My friend right here, Pablo Johnson, renowned food critic and author from New Orleans. He's here to help me pick the best tailgate in Tuscaloosa. All right, I, it's a tough job, man. I mean, I, you know, <laughs> yeah. out there sampling food and you go to, eat and I gain weight. I don't know how that works. Oh, you got to go running with me in the morning, oh. Saturday morning run. Forget it. I'll just gain weight. <laughs> Can Alabama get anything going on offense? Five man rush. Pass underneath to McCoy, and he's out of bounds at the 46. Let's see what Todd and Pablo found. Pablo, this is the place you chose. Tell me why. Okay, it's one guy working 30 hours with three grills, two smokers, and a TV. It's Taylor George from Birmingham. All right, Taylor, I guess the, the real test for us is in the taste, so let's get after it. <laughs> okay, he had a little bit of everything. He had ribs, he had chicken, he had... Mushrooms, grilled asparagus. He had smokers and grills going. He had it going on. Grilled asparagus. Grilled asparagus. You know, you got to have a little. I mean, there's something in there. healthy and tasty. The town. Absolutely. If I want my boys at home to eat healthy, I got to set the tempo, set the example. Well, at least you grilled it with butter and barbecue sauce. It's it's not just <laughs> fresh out of the field, so there's still <laughs> vitamins in it. No, I'll tell you, it, it was really good. And Pablo did a great job. He was out there scouring around. I was out there looking around and. Uh, he knows his food, that's for sure. He knows his food. He wrote a book called uh, Game Day Gourmet for ESPN. It's all about the right kind of food to cook at a uh, football game, at a tailgate. Wilson throws this one away. And Game Day Gourmet is available in uh, bookstores everywhere. Got a big hot dog and a goalpost on the cover. I like that. Yeah. The forward's written by Mike Golick. Now, now, Mike Golick's an eater, too. Mike <laughs> likes to eat a little bit. You know, I think he's doing those commercials about losing weight, but I think he still likes to a good throw down every now and then. Well, you're like Theisman. You're going to wake up one morning, and you're going to be 125 pounds heavier than you were when you went to sleep. John Parker Wilson facing a third and long. They have reached the Georgia 45. Blitz coming off the corner. Pass is complete, but that's only going to be for about seven yards to the 39. Hi, I'm Joe Th Sunday on ABC. Alabama has decided to kick it away. Discretion being the better part of valor. Punt of 40 yards, no return, but Georgia will be able to start at the 20-yard line. With only two minutes and 18 seconds left in the half. You know, one of the things that has got to be a concern for Nick Saban again tonight, as it was last week, their defense has played a lot more plays than their offense for Alabama in the first half. And last week in the second half is when Arkansas really started to make a move. 28 answer, answer points they scored in the second half. A lot of yardage, most of their yardage, most of the damage came in the second half against a pretty thin defensive front. Stafford and the Dogs take over at their own 20. Thomas Brown is the tailback and he gets the carry. Weaving his way for about four. Here's Holly. Well, guys, 
Nick Saban told us to him the big key to this game would be does his team have the character to sustain the performance level they had last week against Arkansas. That game took so much emotion it was like a classic heavyweight fight and being on the field already so much tonight this defense looks tired to me right now guys. Well, they just have played twice as many plays as the Georgia defense and, and they don't have the depth up front. That's you know your great teams in college football have depth in the defensive line and they rotate six to eight guys through there. Alabama does not have that luxury right now. Brown again even though they have gone through a real hard conditioning program and they've tried to get them to buy into the idea that the fourth quarter belongs to them psychologically that's great but physically if you're breaking down it's tough to sell it psychologically. You take a look at that right now total number of plays. 39 to 23 and it and it's it takes more out of a defense to play plays yep. than it does an offense. I mean that's just the way it is. Now receivers get tired running up and down the field but by and large for the most part all 11 positions defense it wears more on them than it does on offense. Third and three. Forty seven seconds. To go in the half. Mims to kick again. Last time he had a high snap. Arkansas backs off. Arenas will make a fair catch. Signal just outside the 30. We talked about uniforms. Todd, what are the top five uniforms in college football well, all time? Uh, this is totally a personal opinion. I mean, this is my opinion only. But number five to me, I love the baby blue, the powder blue, and the gold of UCLA. But everything else is pretty standard. Texas in the all white. I love the helmet. Alabama classic uniform. The number on the side of the helmet, the red and white. The Michigan helmet, even though they beat my Penn Staters today, still love the uniform. And the number one uniform to me, the classic, the best on the planet, the blue and white at Penn State. You know, I can't argue with any of those, but I wish you had added one more and put Notre Dame in there. I think uh, that Notre Dame, no matter what color they're wearing, I think it's classic. McCoy makes the catch. They get out of bounds, especially the green. There's something about those green uniforms oh, when they throw those out. Well, I could go with the dark blue, okay, but not the green. Yeah, I'd rather have the dark blue myself. All right, Alabama with 32 seconds to go in the half. They have a timeout to spend. Stafford, who was so brilliant in the two-minute drill at the end of the game last week. I mean, John Parker Wilson, excuse me. Blitz coming. Didn't have a chance, and that's going to be a face mask as they literally almost dehorned him. Jeff Owens came in. Well, and as soon as the helmet comes off, that's a dead ball. The ball is dead, and he got hit after his helmet was off. So I think there's two fouls on the play. Now, the Georgia defenders may not have heard the whistle, but in college football, if your headgear comes off, the play is dead. In pro football, foul, you can still go. Face mask, number 99 on the defense. 15 yard penalty is enforced from the previous spot. Automatic first down. They call it on Jarius Win 99. This is a great pass rush. The first guy in there is Jeff Owens, number 95. He's the guy who gets the face yeah. mask, risks the helmet completely off, and that's so dangerous right there. You know, playing without your headgear, that's why they call it a dead ball in college football. John Parker Wilson, the lucky his head still was in there. Here's McCoy on the little dump pass. Smart play, gets out of bounds at the 36. So the foul was on Owens, 95. Here's the timeouts for Alabama. This little, that little bug right there. And you can see one yellow slash left for Alabama. They got the one timeout with 19 seconds left. Georgia out of timeout. Which means that Alabama can work any part of the field on this second down play because they have that timeout. Normally you want to save that timeout to set up a field goal and not have to rush that unit on the field. Georgia showing blitz. They come with five. Again, McCoy makes the catch. Should be enough for a first down at the 29-yard line. Lee Tiffin, the field goal kicker in the wings, who has not exactly been Mr. Automatic through his two-year career. Right now you're looking at about a 45, 46-yard field goal for Tiffin. 
is long this season so far, 42. Alabama's thinking probably one more completion here. You definitely do not want to sack if you're John Parker Wilson. Deep down the middle and incomplete head, Matt Cadell and missed it. Cadell caught the winner last week, and John Parker Wilson, I think, may have been surprised by the lack of pressure and just overthrew him. Georgia plays a lot of cover, too, with split safeties, and they tried to get a guy down the middle. That's a vulnerable spot against two deep safeties and just a slight overthrow for Cadell. One more shot here for John Parker Wilson. They still have the one timeout if they come up short or if it's still in the field of play. Cadell and Hall go to the left. Blitz coming. McCoy. They throw back to the right. He's out of bounds at the 23. That'll make it about yeah. a 40-yard field goal try. Unless they could run one more yeah, sideline They could play. run one more. It's got to be quick, and it's got to end quick. Throw quick, end quick. Is four or five more yards worth it in this situation? Well, I think if your field goal kicker is, is just a little bit over 50%, maybe it is. And Lee Tiffin, 6 of 11. Coming into the ball game, if he's a little more accurate, if he's Brandon Katu, I think you're ready to kick the ball right now if you're Georgia. McCoy is on the right. John Parker Wilson snuck a look that way. Now he goes to the end zone, floating it up for Hall, and it's overthrown. Hall had the inside. Darius Newberry was applying pressure. Rashad Jones was the defender, and here comes Lee Tiffin. Yep. In his career, 14 of 24, this year 6 of 11. Now he had D.J. Hall, but because of the pressure from Newberry, he was not able to step into that throw, and the ball really took off from him into the end zone. Tiffin from 40 yards to cut it to a one-touchdown game. And Tiffin is perfect. championship trophies in the Malmore Athletic Center. The last national championship coming in 1992 under coach Gene Stallings. Watch the sneak here. There it is. Well, they made it look easy, too. Well, you know, I was watching some tape with Major Applewhite. And it looked like Georgia in their goal line defense gives you the sneak. They don't pinch that in. The linebackers play a little deep. And plus, your center, Antoine Caldwell, is one of the best in He's the SEC. The That's a good guy to go behind when you're inside the one. He's your really great offensive lineman. Extra point away from tying it up. I tell you, you made the call, though, partner. Terry Grant became relevant again in the Alabama offense that drive, and they got a touchdown. Well, review. Now, they're going to review the touchdown call. He's eighth in the country in rushing, second in the SEC. plays during the game to make sure they get it right. Let them hold up 20 plays. I think it's terrific. Our flight's not till tomorrow morning, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it does it. We talk about momentum so yeah. much in college football, and Alabama has it back as they scored at the end of the first half, and they get a touchdown now to tie it up at 10-10. But they had the momentum last week. They had a yeah. big lead twice. They led by 21 points. That's right. And as Nick Saban described it, they had a meltdown. So who's got the advantage right now? You think Alabama? I do think Alabama has it because they, they're energized. The crowd is energized. And I think they learned some lessons off of that game last week. Yes, they won. Yes, it was thrilling. Yes, they got patted on the back. But they made a slew of mistakes, particularly in the second half, defending Arkansas. So now's a chance to step out and say, we learned from our mistakes last week. We won't let it get away from us again this week. And they have learned from their mistakes in this game, I thought. They have adjusted very well on defense to stop Georgia. Brown and Marino are deep. This is Brown. Running hard up to the 27. Let's take a look at the ESPNU All-State Standings Review. 
And we've got USC winning comfortably. LSU with uh, a pretty good test against South Carolina. Florida hang on by its hanging on by its fingernails. Yeah, that was a tough game today against Ole Miss in Oxford. Mississippi played very well, but Florida able to come away with the win. Oklahoma pretty impressive the other night, Friday night at Tulsa. And in one double A, Appalachian State lost to Wofford. Mm. Appalachian State, you will recall, had knocked off Michigan. Brown is the tailback behind Stafford. He'll get the carry. I think right now, if you're Georgia, you, you just got to stay about your business. You know, it's a it's a tie ball game. Alabama has some momentum. I, I do think this young offensive line has held their own okay. And, and you know what, what Georgia does in pass protection a lot, they do a lot of slide protection, which means they'll slide to the left or right, and they seal off the inside. So pressure that comes, comes from the outside. I think they're playing okay. Matthew Stafford just has to be smart with the football. He can't force any more bad throws like he did the last time with the interception. We'll go to the shotgun this time. Blitz coming. Throws underneath and it's dropped right in the bread basket for Trip Chandler. And that's his second drop in the ball game. And, and you know, I know they want to try to work the middle of the field and work the tight end. He's a big target at 6'6", 260. But at some point, you start to lose confidence in a guy when he doesn't come up with the football. Doesn't matter what size you are if yeah. you don't catch it, does it? I mean, you know, that, that should have been a third and one at the very least or a first down. Now you're third down and six. Really let the ball get into his body and then ricochet off his stomach. Alabama being aggressive on defense. Stafford goes to the gun again. Blitz, but a nice throw and catch. Bailey runs the quick slant. Stafford hit him in stride. And that's where you see the strength of Matthew Stafford's arm. Now we got two players with their face masks all tied up. There was pressure coming, and Matthew Stafford threw this off his back foot as he was kind of, his weight was going backwards. He's still able to stick that ball in there on a rope on the slant. Take a look at both guys, very similar numbers. With the exception of that right there, the two interceptions by Matthew Stafford. A glaring mistake right now for him. First down, Dodge at their own 38. Stafford short set. That time he threw off his back foot again. After a pump, he got the ball to Bailey. That's one thing to do that on the quick throws. You still got plenty of arm strength to get him there. You try to do that a little deeper, you get in a lot of trouble. Well, see, he saw the corner blitz coming, and he was ready to throw it quick, but Bailey wasn't looking quick, and so he had to kind of double clutch and continue to retreat a little bit. But if you don't have a gun, you can't make that throw anyway. I mean, he, he obviously has a great arm, but it is always better to set your feet. Marino is in a tailback on second and five. Marino straight power run about a yard shy of a first down good block by Sutherland in front of him Sutherland is a big time fullback at 240 very versatile guy He's got good speed and strength very good receiver out of the backfield excellent lead blocker in this Georgia is one of the few you know true eye formation teams left in college football now, a lot of teams run out of the eye as much as Georgia does and if you want to do that you better have a brute of a blocking fullback, and they do. He's a great short yardage runner as well. Third to yard. Stafford play fake. Going to run for it. And just good feet. got there. Rolando McClain, I thought he yeah. was going to drive him out of bounds short of the first down, but Stafford, again, he's a big quarterback, 6'3", 235 pounds, able to get away from the tackle, and then some nifty footwork on the sideline. That was a big-time scramble by Stafford. They went for a big play on third and one. It was covered by Alabama, and Stafford made a play when everything broke down. I like the play call as well. Yeah. But Stafford showed you a little burst of speed and some strength. Marino remains in as the tailback for the dogs from midfield. Stafford with it, post to Bailey, and Bailey in 
inside the 20 to the 17-yard line. Simeon Castillo finally wrestled him down, but it's a gain of 33. Again, I just, I know I keep saying the arm strength this staffer. Watch him stick that right foot in the ground and let the ball fly right in between Castillo and McClain. That is a beautiful throw on the rope into a tight space. Stick the foot in the ground, let it fly. Good timing and a great spot for the football. Bailey with big time potential missed last year with a knee injury. His dad played in the NFL as a wide receiver. Option one, Stafford. That was a very different look. That's one that you draw up in the locker room at halftime. They play, they took Sutherland and sent him out as a wide receiver, and that was a, an option all the way for Matthew Stafford. And if you're a defense, you say fine. Stafford can carry that as many times as he wants to. We're not going to give him the pitch. And we are going to hit him. Yes, sir. The 15 yard line, second and eight. Fake to Marino. Slam, tipped, incomplete, but a flag. Castillo with the coverage. D'Amico uh, Goodman was the intended receiver. He's been out for the early part of the season, had a torn knee. In the 10th game last year, he's just about back to 100%. Caught a 34-yard touchdown last week against Western Carolina. Pass interference. Defense number two. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. But again, you see that quick trigger, that quick release of Matthew Stafford. Make the fake, plant the foot, let it go. And it's the right hand of Simeon Castillo that got him in trouble. The left hand making a play on the ball, the right hand Kind of wrapped around D'Amico Goodman. I didn't like that call. You can have a hand on somebody if you're not altering their body position. Marino on the toss. Touchdown. Wow. Bruce Figgins to tight end with a good block on the corner. And Marino took it in. How about Matthew Stafford on that drive? How about this young offensive line? Two true freshmen, guys who were playing on Friday nights last year, a redshirt freshman. And they drive it right down the field and go back up by a touchdown. Bailey caught 46 yards worth of passes on that drive. And Stafford leads his team to the front as they're on top 17-10. Yard field goal. With the score now 2010 Bulldogs, we pick up the action with the ensuing kick here on ESPN Classic. I don't know how many years you'll go back to the Super Bowl or the uh, Superdome, but it's got to feel weird every time. Ugga on top, 20 to 10. He's the winningest Ugga of all time anyway trying to add another one here and remember Mark Rick's road record a remarkable 22 and 3 that's scary in this league scary in any league in opponents home stadium 22 and 3 that play is good in Jacksonville against the Gators but that's a different story Arenas Thanks, Reese. USC's pretty good, aren't they? Yes, they are. The biggest question about them is can they stay focused? You know, that the, the talent is not a question. The coaching is not a question. Can they stay focused? Last year, they lost two games to teams that they shouldn't have lost to. And uh, it, yeah. was, it was really probably more a situation, not to take anything away from UCLA or Oregon State, but they don't have the same kind of people that USC does, but USC lost some focus. Alabama has had very few chances to sustain the drive tonight. Their longest drive of the evening, only 46 yards. That time, John Parker Wilson flushed out of the pocket. 
not even going to pick up a couple of yards. It'll be a holding call against Alabama. And the problem with that inability to sustain drives is not only do you not score points, but you, you don't let your defense rest. And it's already a defense that, that is a little thin, particularly up front. They don't have the luxury of substituting a lot. And then in the fourth quarter. Holding. Offense number 29. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Still second down. They've got to come out and defend a, a running team. They had to do it last week against Arkansas. They were able to held, hold on and make some plays in the last drive. Well, you take a look at that. 31 minutes and 32 seconds Georgia has had the football, and now they're going to give a steady, steady dose of no Sean Marino and Thomas Brown to this Alabama defense with a 10-point lead. Alabama has to score, get the ball back, score again. Wilson down the middle, great, great. catch even with contact. Yes. Keith Brown hangs on. What a throw, what a catch. Keith Brown is a very talented receiver. Keelan Johnson still down after that collision. Keith Brown was suspended the first game, didn't catch a pass the, the next game. He got two receptions last week against Arkansas, and he also is the guy that drew the two pass interference penalties against Arkansas late in the last game-winning drive. Well, he's a big receiver, 6'3", yeah. 194. And the two safeties, Jones and Johnson, sandwiched him. Hear those pads smack. If you're a quarterback, I mean, that, that speaks so much to you. A guy who's willing to go in there and catch it like that and hold on to the ball. He doesn't alligator arm it. He knows he's going to get popped. Uh, that makes you want to come back to a guy like that, Keith Brown. Yeah, when you know what's coming, well, somebody said a long time ago, you're going to get hit, you might as well catch it. Yeah. Good to see Jones up. Keelan Johnson. Keelan Johnson, rather. Key guy in this defensive secondary, kind of the quarterback back there, a senior. Good to see him up on his own two feet. Fresh set of downs for Alabama. Grant. I'll tell you the thing I like about Alabama. Thank you, coffee, excuse me. Their wide receivers do a nice job of blocking downfield. They, they know the importance of blocking. Kurt Signetti is the wide receiver coach. Was at North Carolina State the last seven years. They're doing a nice job with these guys blocking downfield. That time Mike McCoy, number 80, with a big time block. And that's the only way your running game is going to be really right. good. The only way. That's how four-yard gains become 14-yard gains, is wide receivers blocking. Time John Parker Wilson going deep. McCoy tipped away at the last minute. Jones. I don't know why John Parker Wilson waited so long on this throw. If he throws it sooner and if he throws it more on the line, he has a touchdown. But he waited so long that it enabled the defender, Rashad Jones, to get over there and make a play on the ball. He had his man singled up, running away from his defender, and for whatever reason, maybe he didn't see it, held onto the ball too long and then put too much air under it as well. So it brings up third and two. Try to get it on the ground. It looks like they did with coffee. Check in with Holly. Well, guys, for Alabama, all year long, they have been working on this fourth quarter conditioning program. When Nick Saban came in, he turned the conditioning program upside down. The guys wear this in the weight room. It says fourth quarter. And then on the front, it has those four fingers they hold up. But they have got some symbols here to really reiterate to the players what they were working for in the offseason. The players we talked to said they've never been through anything so difficult in their entire lives. Terry Grant said, you know, it already paid off in the fourth quarter. I could feel it working. I feel stronger than ever. Well, Holly, that's the kind of thing that helps build this, the, the confidence that you need for a program. It showed last week right. whether conditioning was the main factor or not. Being able to win that game right. in the final seconds had to be a huge boost for Nick Saban's kids. Absolutely. You're getting a lot of confidence from that, but here they are. Again, you know, football is a what-have-you-done-for-me-lately yes. business. I mean, it's, you know, it's all ready to the next challenge. Defense, number three. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. 
And here they are again, trailing in the fourth quarter, just like they were a week ago. But they're on the move. They got some momentum going right here. And they got a first down. Boy, I still, I still go back to that play just a few plays ago. John Parker Wilson had a chance for a big touchdown there and wasn't able to connect. Coffee. All right, thanks, Reese. We have a timeout as they uh, continue to have coffee. They're going to measure, I believe, as they continue to have coffee in as the tailback. He's not so much a game breaker as Grant might be, but a bigger guy. And it's going to be just shy. And bring up a second and in inches. Well, this is the play that uh, all the guys in the stands are going to call for a fake yeah. and a pass. Do you like it here? I don't think you need to right now. I really don't. I mean, I, you know, if everybody in the stands is thinking that, then I'll guarantee you Willie Martinez is thinking about it, yeah. too. And uh, you got some momentum. You're running the football pretty well with coffee. I'd say run behind big 71. If I'm Alabama on this short yardage situation, I'm running right over here behind big 71. Coffee behind behind 71. They were thinking with you. Yeah. That was a corner blitz off the short side, and Thomas the receiver Flowers. was not able to cut him off. They brought the receiver, Keith Brown, in motion in order to prevent that, and Thomas Flowers just timed it perfectly and got into the backfield. Watch this. Watch Thomas Flowers. He's going to shoot in here, and Keith Brown is not able to cut him off. They bring him in motion to cut him off, and he's just late getting there. Heads up play by Flowers. Well, Big 71 can't block him. No, can't block him and his man. Wow, what a play. Actually lost a yard and a half, so it's third and two. John Parker Wilson falls down. It looked like his center stepped yeah. on his foot. Coming out, they lose a couple more. He got stepped on. It's happened to anybody that's ever played the quarterback position. I think Antoine Caldwell maybe is pulling on this play. And as Parker Wilson tries to pull out, there's the right foot, gets him and trips him up. It's an embarrassing thing, but the smart thing he did was not try to flip the ball to Terry Grant or hand off as he's going down. Protect the football. Well, now it's fourth down, and they've got to go for it. They're down two scores with 822 and counting. They had second and inches. Now it's fourth and seven. Game could be on the line right here. John Parker Wilson throws it. can draw a flag, and it does. And, and it's the right call. D.J. Hall was the intended receiver. Prince Miller was covering him, and he was all over him. D.J. Hall has been very quiet tonight. Two catches, 25 yards. Mark Rick calling for an uncatchable pass, but I think that one was catchable. Automatic first down. Watch D.J. Hall working against Prince Miller. And there's the grab. I mean, it's a clear interference. It is a catchable pass. Sure. It's a good call. It would have been. Yeah, exactly. So Alabama is still alive. Now is when you go play action and take a shot at the end zone. Good play fake to Terry Grant or Glenn Coffey. And take a shot. Safeties are cheating up. Wilson for the end zone. They said he was out of bounds. I don't know. I thought he had a foot in. Well, DJ Hall, senior receiver, has got to know where his feet are. Oh, he's the left foot's in. It looked like the left foot was in before the right foot landed out. And they just replayed it here on the Jumbo Trot at the stadium. That is a catch. Well, they'll take a look at it, you know, and again, just like you mentioned earlier, they stop the game, they'll take a look. Does his left foot come down in play before the oh, right yeah. foot out? Yes. I think this one will be reversed. It's got to be indisputable evidence. Left foot hits. Yeah, he's coming up off that left foot already before the right foot goes down. 
And that's the kind of call you don't expect him to get wrong because they're both, both officials said it was out of bounds, but they're lined up right on that yeah. line. They got a great look at it. They're in position to make the call, but that will be overturned. Yep. Clearly. And there doesn't appear any question about possession either. Now, the only thing is that, you know, we're seeing it in slower motion, and it was easier to see the right foot landing out of bounds than the left foot oh, in. Certainly. But it was uh, good footwork on the sideline by D.J. Hall. How many big plays has Hall already made this year? This yeah. guy is is the most overlooked big-time receiver in this league. I'll tell you what, though, the NFL scouts that are in here, and I see them on practice on Thursday, they're in watching film. That's one of the guys they're paying a, a lot of attention to. I would to. think so. I mean, he's the upperclassman. You know, you've got a couple offensive linemen that are good, but they're young. This guy's a senior, and uh, he's getting a lot of looks. You wonder why this would be taking this long. The left foot is clearly down. And in college ball, one foot in is all you need. Watch the left foot. It hits before the right foot. There's the call. Right? Here's the shot right there. It's not even close. And everything that we're seeing is being sent to the replay booth. Exactly. So, so all of our replay angles and shots, they're seeing the same thing. All right, guys, I, I defend definitive. replay until I go blue in the face. But enough <laughs> is enough. Let's play some football. Well, it shouldn't take this long, but it is a uh, potentially a real game-changing decision right here. Usually when it takes this long, uh, it is not so much about the call. It's where the spot might be. Yeah, good call. It would be, we're told from the replay, at the seven-yard line, first and goal. After review, the ruling on the field is reversed. I thought for all the world he was going to say the ruling is going to be upheld. It was the way he phrased it. I thought the phrasing was supposed to be uh, video <laughs> evidence. First. He got us. <laughs> he got us. First and goal, 7.59 to go. This is the drive Alabama had to have. They need two scores. Well, they got help on a pass interference on fourth down. They got the right call and a reversal on that play. And here they are, first and goal on the seven. Coffee runs into a blocker, and he's going to be gang tackled at the line of scrimmage. Now, right now, Georgia obviously wants to keep Alabama out of the end zone and make them settle for a field goal here because they need two scores. But the other thing that Georgia wants to do is let that clock run because the clock is, is on their side right now with a 10-point lead. Yeah, so they want to delay Alabama's score, make it three if they can, and run as much clock as they can. John Parker Wilson appears to be changing the place. Got four wide receivers. Going to give it to Coffee. Coffee hit the line of scrimmage. Dives inside the five. It was the 11th play of this drive. Marcus Howard made the tackle. And you'd like to see Alabama at this point playing with maybe a little bit more sense of urgency, think, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think they need a little more sense of urgency. Now it's going to be interesting. When Georgia gets in this part of the field defensively, they do one of two things. They either play a pressure defense with man, zero coverage, no safety, or they play like a picket fence. And they put some linebackers and secondary guys right along the goal line, right there. That's a picket fence. That means zone. Alabama likes to run against this rather than throw. John Parker Wilson can't afford to make a mistake here. Throws the ball out of the end zone, incomplete. See, and that? you got the feeling they've got to go for the field goal yeah. here. Yeah, they got to take the points right here. But that kind of defense with that picket fence, there's not very much room to throw the football. You've only got 10 yards with the end zone, and they're going to make you throw that ball short or out of the end zone. Tiffin to make it a one-score game. He's already hit from 40 yards. This basically an extra point from 22. Good snap, good hold, perfect kick. 20 to 13, Alabama within a touchdown. 
We'll be back to Tuscaloosa in a moment. to kick off Brown and Marino check it Brown only now is back as the return man high short kick taken by one of the up men Sean Chappas and right now what Alabama must do is they must be tough against the run because Georgia wants to run this clock and they're going to give the ball to Thomas Brown First down, very critical. Who wins this down right here? First down. Brown behind Sutherland. You saw some confusion on that Alabama defense. Georgia wins first down. And some. The 47-yard line. One of the safeties came up to talk to Ezekiel Knight and told him he needed to be further split out. Knight did it for a second, then went back inside. And there's nothing tricky about that play from Georgia. It's eye formation. It's just a give. It's a power play. They didn't run motion. There wasn't an exotic formation. Alabama just not lined up and not gap sound on that particular play. Clock running under six minutes to go. Brown showing us some toughness of his own. And run out of bounds, and that is a big break for the Alabama defense. They held it to a two-yard gain and stopped the clock as well. Now, ideally, if you're Mark Rick, you want your running backs to stay in bounds. Get what you can get, but stay in bounds. Alabama has all three of their timeouts. Don't help them any more than they already need it. They've got the three timeouts. At some point, they'll have to start using them if you get some more first down. Second call at seven. Brown hitting the backfield and drilled. Wallace Gilberry. Gilberry. Yep. That was an eight-man front, a late shift by Alabama into what we used to call the Bear defense, made popular by Buddy Ryan when he was the defensive coordinator of the Chicago Bears. Eight-man front, they cover up the center and both guards. They put two guys on the tight end side, another guy outside, and it's a pressure defense, and they jumped into it late. And Matthew Stafford not able to get out of that running clock. Clock winding down toward five on third and 11. Did Georgia, do you throw it here? I think you might take a smart chance at it, but don't force a bad one. Maybe out in the flat, they've been so successful with those. Instead, Stafford downfield. Players got their feet yep. tangled up, and they will not call that interference. And they Simeon should. Castile was right with Goodman. In good position, and this is a safe throw, because even if this one's intercepted, it's going to be just like a punt in this part of the field. Good no call. They got their feet tangled up. Well, you take a shot downfield, it's a safe throw. Either your guy gets it or nobody does, and now you punt the football. It only took 136 off the clock on that drive with one play that went out of bounds and the incomplete pass. Arenas is back to his 10. Mims to punt. High floating kick. Arenas lets it go and it bounces out of bounds at the 11 yard line. Alabama, 89 yards away from a tie. Over Tuscaloosa, it's 20 to 13. Georgia on top of Alabama, starting their worst field position the entire night. John Parker Wilson deep downfield, out of bounds, call. All three timeouts, 438 for Alabama right now. Second and 10, Wilson airs out another one. Brown to the 45. If he had kept his feet, he had a chance to go all the way. How about the aggressive calls by Major Applewhite? You bet. First and second down, you're inside your own 15, and both plays, you're throwing deep. Holy One to the right God. side to DJ.
TJ Hall. Now you come back left and you go to Keith Brown. He's working on Brian Evans, who missed last week with a knee injury. Maybe not 100%. And Keith Brown ran right by him. Coffee pounds his way to the 40. Boy, and under pressure. What a nice throw from John Parker Wilson. Let's go to Holly Rowe. Guys, offensive coordinator Major Applewhite said the thing that impressed him the most last week about John Parker Wilson was his maturity and composure. He said, you know, he had some bad moments in the game, a fumbled snap and an interception. But when we needed him at the end, he was focused, ready to go when we got the ball back. He was there. Looks like same thing again this week. Well, he was there with the two-minute drive at the end of the half. Already tonight. Draw play to Upchurch getting his first chance to play. I'll tell you what, if somebody else doesn't want him, I'll take him, yeah. that quarterback. He's got some moxie to him. There's yes, no question about does. that. He's not overly big. He doesn't have the kind of arm that Matthew Stafford has. But he's got something. And he likes to run the two-minute offense. I think the kid is a winner. 345 to go in the ball game. It's a one-touchdown lead. Defense. They're nursing a seven-point lead. Alabama has reached the 30-yard line. They have reached the 25 as Grant is back in there. Coming up after us, John Anderson, Scott Van Pelt with Sports Center showdowns in the SEC. There was a big win in the Big Ten, and the Yankees come up with a big walk-off. Mentioned that timeout. I mean. The one thing, you, you have to waste it, and you only have one left for your offense, but a very smart timeout by Georgia. They had him on the 11. Now they're in scoring territory. Coffee. Got to the 22-yard line. They need to reach the 21 for a first down. Here comes a big time third down play now third and short the last time they were third and short Georgia came with that corner blitz anticipating the run behind Andre Smith and got the back in the backfield. Coffee runs into his own man second effort as the first down. Smart play that time by Major Applewhite. Instead of having a wide receiver, you take that threat of a blitz out, you go two tight ends, a power formation, and still run behind your two most experienced linemen, Andre Smith, the left tackle, and Justin Britt, the left guard. Under two and a half minutes to go. They start this series from the 19-yard line. Empty backfield. John Parker Wilson with time underneath McCoy. That could be a pick. That well, could be an offensive interference call. I think, I think it, it could be that, but I think Andre Smith, the left tackle, was downfield. I think he was across the line of scrimmage when the ball was thrown. That wouldn't be good either. Yeah, that's Andy, what that is. Right. It was a crossing route, and, and I don't know, something crossed up Andre Smith because he was down the field blocking like he thought it was a screen pass. Here's Andre Smith, number 71. Now watch, he's going to block, and then for some reason, he's going to release. Wow. Oh. He was not. Can we, let's see that again. That, that was. Uh... Oh, I got. OK. What happened was, because Andre Smith may not have been in the line of scrimmage, they thought D.J. Hall was a covered receiver, so he was the guy that was in an eligible receiver based on alignment downfield, not that's, Andre Smith. That's what it had to be. Wilson. Complete down to the 16-yard line. Brown made that catch. Under two minutes to go in the ball game. Alabama needs a touchdown and an extra point to tie. And that's middle linebacker Marcus yeah. Washington slow to get up. Back inside to the middle and Darius Dewberry will play the outside linebacker position. Who was the previous starter. 
second and seven. Up church is the running back. He'll get the ball in the draw. Church inside the 10 to the 6. First and goal. How about this? How about the use of the backs? I mean, we've seen Terry Grant make big plays. We've seen Glenn Coffey get some tough yards. And now we see another guy, Roy Upchurch, listed as the fourth tailback, in with some fresh legs and a little burst and breaking tackles, heading towards the Georgia goal line. Clock running. Alabama, all three of their timeouts. No rush for them right now. They can stop the clock anytime they want. First and goal. John Parker Wilson has to take off. It's an 88-yard drive in 10 plays, 3 minutes and 41 seconds. Now, if you're a Georgia fan, you have a great field goal kicker right. with a strong leg. Brandon Katu is, in his career, 5 of 10 from 50 yards or more. And that's a pretty good percentage for that long of a field goal. Yes, it is. Two of 52 in his career. I mean, this kid has everything that you'd want in a place kicker. He's made a lot of big kicks and a lot of long kicks. What he needs now, if you're a Georgia fan, is the opportunity. And if you're Georgia, what you're thinking here is just getting that first first down. In a two-minute situation like this, you don't worry about getting in field goal range. You make the first first down. That's the most critical thing you have to do in running a clock offense. You've got one timeout and a minute nine to take the lead, or attempt to take the lead. Thomas Brown is the deep man. He waits at the seven yard line. <laughs> Takes it at the 12. That's a seam up the middle. Nice return to the 33. After Matthew Stafford, the thing to keep in mind, you're not Lose it. The game is tied. Don't do anything foolish. Four man rush. Throws short. Complete up to the 42. Ball came loose, but it was after the tackle. Thomas Brown out of the backfield. A pattern they were extremely successful on in the first half. Yeah. Georgia has one timeout left. Clock is running. They did not get a first down. It'll stop if they get a first down until they move the chain. Wide receiver screen. Now, the clock will stop until they reset the chains. They're across the 50. That one timeout, you want to try to save to set up your field goal Excellent. kicker so you don't have to try to run them out under duress to line up to kick a field goal. So you save that as long as you can. Bailey made the last catch. Bailey, Massaqua, and Henderson are the wide receivers for Stafford. Blitz coming. Stafford throws, and the tight end, Chandler, got his hands on it again and couldn't hold it. The blitz was coming from Castile. Sharif had the coverage. Well, he's had a tough night. Now, this is good coverage, but another catchable pass for Trip Chandler. And he has had a hard time hanging on to the football tonight. Tough to call his number after that, yes, isn't sir. it? Second and 10, 23 seconds left. They need 15 for about a 51-yard try. 
Blitz coming Stafford under pressure through behind Brown. Ezekiel Knight with the pressure. He's had an active ball game all night, and he forced Matthew Stafford to throw this one away. Stafford tried to throw it while he was backing up. Not able to get enough on the football. The two, two years ago, hit a 58-yard field goal. So he's got the leg to give it a shot, but it's into a slight win. They need a first down to stop the clock. Brown on the draw. He won't get there. At yeah, the 42. Use a timeout right here. Yeah, Mark Rick's calling the timeout. Got to. Keep in mind now, the last time that Georgia played here in Tuscaloosa, 2002, they beat Alabama 27 to 25 on a Billy Bennett 32-yard field goal with 42 seconds left in the game. So we could be heading to a similar type scenario. Or we are heading that way. From here, they could try a 58-yard field goal, which is the career long for Katu. Georgia 1-7 in Tuscaloosa, that only win. Mark Rick, the head coach, 2002. Former Auburn coach Pat Dye suggested that week that Georgia maybe wasn't man enough to come into Tuscaloosa and beat Alabama. They did. Huh. Not a real good thing to say, would well, you think? Well, Pat Dye was from Georgia, yeah. so I think he was firing up his own guy. They got to be man up right here on fourth down. A first down will stop the clock while they move the chains. Then they could be at the line of scrimmage and kill the clock. Blitz coming. Stafford over the he middle. Got it. Tight end got that one. <laughs> they got to get up and spike the ball. Line. They got to get up and spike the ball. The clock will stop until that's the beauty of college now. With five seconds, it won't start until they get the chain set. Plenty of time for Matthew Stafford to spike the ball and kill the clock and set up the field goal. Takes the snap, kills the How clock. How about Trip Chandler? Whoa. He had at least four drop passes in the ball game tonight, but when it mattered the most on fourth and one, and he was not the primary receiver. They were trying to throw to the back out of the backfield. He's a secondary receiver. He hangs on for the first down. Tell you what, he drops that one. He might have needed a telescope to find the scholarship. <laughs> Oh, what a finish. Two weeks in a row from Tuscaloosa. Here comes Brandon Katu in Alabama. Between winning a game and having a short field goal. A 6'6 junior out of Woodstock, Georgia. Mm. Katu in pregame warmups from 50 yards with no win, but plenty of distance. Wind blowing at him right now. And Alabama with nothing else to do with those timeouts, you might as well Absolutely. use them. Now the wind is gust. Conference, 58 yards. Hanson the snapper, Mims the holder, to two to win it. Plenty of distance, but it's wide. Do you believe this? That ball would have been good from 60 as far as distance is concerned. We absolutely nailed it. And we will have overtime from Tuscaloosa. Pulled it. He yeah. nailed it, but he pulled it. And now what Georgia has to recognize right now is they didn't lose the game. That's right. You know, and so Alabama celebrating. They didn't lose. It's overtime. Keep your head up. We still get to play here, guys.
see some good football, isn't it? <laughs> Last week, Alabama came from behind in the fourth quarter to win. Tonight, they've come from behind in the fourth quarter to tie. Katu had a 47-yard field goal that would have been good from 60, but he just barely pulled it wide of the left upright, and that was into the wind. Yeah. And I'm sure that win maybe affected the way he tried to kick that. It was a little bit lower yep. than he normally kicks. Tried to drive it into the wind, and he just pulled it left. Captains in the center of the field explaining their options to them. And with the wind, is that going to be any of a fa well, any factor in your decision? It could. I mean, if you choose which way you want to go, both teams will go in the same direction. Even though Katu missed, you got to feel he has a little bit of the edge over Lee Tiffin if it comes right. down to field goal kicking. Hales is the goal. He broke it. He'll flip it again. That's Hales. Defense. Which end of the field? You want to play on that end of the field? You stay right there. Who wins the toss? George Ross and elected to play defense. Alabama will have the ball going this way at the 25. First down. All right, Alabama's ball first. They're going into the win. Both teams will go into the win from the 25-yard line. Here's what you're looking at in overtime. Each team gets a possession from the 25 until the winner is decided. There's no game clock, just a play clock. And starting with the third overtime, you have to go for a two-point conversion, so we're not here until next Wednesday. Alabama's requesting that the ball start closer to the left hash. Probably a play designed where the hash mark is. Instead of the ball in the middle of the field, moved it closer to the left hash to start their overtime possession. Coffee. Nothing there. Do you like starting on offense in the overtime or starting on defense so you know what you have to yeah, do? Yeah, I like starting on defense. And Georgia won that toss and elected to go on defense first. I, I think you, it's an advantage knowing what you have to do. You know, whether you need a field goal to tie, a field goal to win, a touchdown to tie, a touchdown to win. Marcus Washington is back in defensively. He's number 44 in the middle of this defense. Now Georgia showing some confusion. They have an uncovered wide receiver. But Alabama didn't get the snap in time to take advantage of. Pressure coming on John Parker Wilson. Throws behind. It was a late shift His for receiver, Georgia. Cadell. Yeah. Roy Upchurch was the guy that they sent out as a wide receiver, and Georgia showed some confusion until Donnell Ellerby finally shifted out from his linebacker position to cover the tailback. That was a different formation. We haven't seen that through the four quarters of play, and, uh, but Alabama not able to capitalize on that confusion by Georgia. Three of 14 for Alabama on third down. Hard to believe that they're in the position they are with those kind of numbers. Not very good night on third down. Third and ten, only a three-man rush. John Parker Wilson throws. That was almost intercepted by Asher Allen. That was a nice play by Asher Allen. He kind of peeled back. It was a zone coverage. John Parker Wilson thought he had single with the inside receiver, and the corner just peeled off and made a play on the football. Now, you've got to score in this situation. If you don't score at all, you're almost handing it to the other team. Tiffin from 42. Got it. So that is the mark for Georgia. They need a field goal to keep it going. I have an important question. Go ahead. What is Brittany doing with her life? Who? Brittany. Brittany who? Spears. What is she doing with her career? <laughs> Why do we care at this point? Is she here? 
<laughs> I don't think so. Is he a football fan? Oh, I'm sure she is. Georgia from the 25. Stafford wants it all. Got it. Touchdown. Mikey Henderson on the first play from scrimmage. What a beautiful throw by Stafford. You asked, Mike, is it better to go on defense first or offense? Defense, you know you need a field goal to keep playing. A touchdown wins it. You can be more aggressive in your play calling. Take a shot on the first down, knowing that Katu's probably going to make it right from where you are. What a play. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe, and our entire ESPN crew, 